Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to take a look at single phase half wave control rectifier with RLE load. So let's get started. This is the circuit diagram. At the first place, you need to ask yourself as why do we need to study this circuit? Especially why do we need an RLE load at the first place? So this is required for two reasons. In case you're using a DC motor as a load, it will be having some internal resistance, it will be having some inductance, it will also have a back EMF, isn't it? As a result, if you are connecting this circuit with a DC motor, it will have an internal circuitry, something like this. As a result, we need to analyze that. Secondly, you can also consider a battery where you will be having an EMF and an internal resistance in, inside that. So as a result, we need to consider these type of loads for practical analysis as well. I hope this point is clear. So we know why this is required to be studied. So now we are going to see how we are going to analyze this particular circuit. So we're going to take a look at the waveforms and parallelly understand the operation through the waveforms. And this explanation will give you a clear understanding of how it operates completely. So we're going to consider a sinusoidal voltage source. And also we're going to consider an voltage E which is available at this point, isn't it? So let me name this as E. So we have a sinusoidal voltage source and we have a voltage, constant voltage that is E that is appearing at this point. Let us extrapolate these signals basically to understand the waveforms. So what are the waveforms that we are going to look at? We are going to look at the gate voltage waveform, basically the pulses and we are going to take a look at the output voltage waveform, the output current waveform and also we are going to look at the voltage across the thyristor. Now let us say we are starting at this instant at zero. So at zero, if you carefully observe, Vs is less than E, isn't it? E is having a higher magnitude compared to Vs. So in that case, what happens when E is having higher polarity compared to Vs, that is basically cathode is having more polarity with respect to the anode as a result it lacked as open circuit and it does not conduct, isn't it? So in that scenario, what will happen? There will be no flow of current through this circuit. Now, let us say at this point, if you carefully observe at this point, we have both Vs and E to be equal, isn't it? And let us call this angle as theta1. So Vs is equal to E at theta1 instant, isn't it? So can we write Vs as equal to Vm sin omega t? So Vm sin omega t, sin omega t is basically theta1 over here, is equal to E. So can we write theta1 is equal to sin inverse of E by Vm. So this is basically the minimum angle at which the circuit has to reach so that we can fire a pulse. Before that, even if you fire a pulse or give a gate pulse, the circuit will act as open circuit. Basically, the thyristor will act as open circuit. So theta 1 is the minimum firing angle or minimum angle that is required for firing angle to be applied or the firing pulse to be applied. I hope this point is clear. So now it has reached a minimum angle firing angle theta 1 and from now Vs is greater than E, isn't it? So in the positive half cycle when Vs is greater than E, that is anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative, that is cathode is having lesser co potential compared to that of the anode. As a result, the ACR is in forward blocking mode now. But when we are applying a gate pulse at say this instant, what will happen? At this instant, you will be seeing the SCR moving from forward blocking mode to forward conduction mode. As a result, it lacked a short circuit and start conducting. Basically, the current will start flowing through this path, it will flow through this path, and it will flow through the load. And what happens to the inductor? The inductor starts charging with a polarity plus and minus in this case. Now, what will happen to the output voltage waveform in this case? So initially, let us start from zero again. At zero, what was the output voltage? If we consider output voltage is the point at this point, at zero, we could see that the output voltage will be equal to E, isn't it? V out will be equal to E because the thyristor is open circuited at this instant, at this instant, isn't it? As a result, what will be the nature of waveform? It will start at E. So V out is equal to E up to what point? Up to the point where the SCR 
turns on up to the point where the SCR turns on over here. If you carefully observe, this is the instant at which we are applying a gate pulse, isn't it? This is the instant at which the SCR turns on. Now when SCR turns on, what happens? This will act as a short circuit and whatever we are applying at the source will be appearing at the load terminals, isn't it? As we had seen in the previous cases. So what will happen? The output voltage will basically follow the supply voltage waveform. It will basically follow the supply voltage waveform till this point. Basically, the inductor will reverse its polarity and still ensure that there is no change in current and the current will still be flowing. As we had seen for the operation of a half wave control rectifier with RL load, same thing happens. The What happens is that the inductor will discharge through this path. As a result, you're seeing an extension over here. Un until and unless the energy in the inductor is completely discharged, it will not go to zero. So V out is going in the negative direction in this particular case. Now what will happen to the output current? If you carefully see the circuit was open circuited till this point and, one, and until and unless we apply a gate pulse, the output current was zero. As a result, it is zero till this point. And once we apply a gate pulse, what was the response? The current started flowing and it will slowly start increasing and reach a peak. And after that, there will still be some amount of current flowing because the inductor does not allow some sudden change in current. Based on the value of inductor that is designed, the current will slowly start decaying. It will go to zero at some point. So once the current is completely decayed at this point, what will happen is that the output voltage, if you observe, the output voltage will go back and be equal to E. Basically, the thyristor again acts as open circuit and the output voltage at this point will be basically equal to E in this case. So it will follow E over here, over this instant. Again, the next cycle repeats and it will follow the same operation as the first cycle. I hope this point is clear. Same thing happens with respect to current. If you see this, the thyristor is getting open circuited at this instant. When the thyristor is open circuited, obviously there will be no current flowing through the load. As a result, it will be equal to zero. Two important points here is this angle at which the output current is becoming equal to zero is called as beta. That is the extension angle, beta. And this angle where Vs is again becoming less than E is basically called as theta 2. This is the instant where again E is greater than Vs, but because of the energy stored in the inductor, the output voltage is continuing to flow in the negative direction. I hope this point is clear. So this is theta 1, this is theta 2, and this is beta. These are three important angles that you need to remember. I hope this point is clear. So the output current again for the next cycle will continue in the same way as it was in the previous case. Now what happens to the voltage across the thyristor waveform? So let us consider this as plus E and let us consider this as minus E. So the waveform starts like this. The reason is very simple. If we consider this instant at zero, that is Vs is equal to zero, isn't it? So Vs minus E will be equal to minus E. So it is starting at minus E. And at this instant, Vs is equal to E. When both are equal, then obviously this will be equal to zero, isn't it? The voltage across the thyristor. And then it goes and reaches a value that at that point where firing angle is triggered. And when the firing angle is triggered, what happens to the shape of the waveform? Instantly, it will act as short circuit and goes to zero because when the SCR is conducting, it will act as short circuit. As a result, the voltage across the thyristor will be equal to zero. I hope this point is clear. Now, once a value of say equal to beta is reached, what will happen? The SCR again uh, becomes turned off. As a result, it will follow the supply voltage waveform that is whatever we are applying the difference between at the supply terminals will be appearing at this point and it is basically following this waveform and the cycle repeats now if you carefully observe if you are considering this as pi if you are considering this as pi and if you are considering this angle as theta 1 and if you are considering this angle as beta now, what is the circuit turnoff time? So, we have seen circuit turnoff time previously, isn't it? Circuit turnoff time is the time interval at which the SCR is turned off. It is basically equal to, if you come carefully observe, this is 2 pi, not pi, sorry. So, 2 pi plus theta 1 minus beta by omega. 
is the circuit term of time isn't it this is the instant at which the SERS actually turned off so at this instant if you carefully observe this angle is given as this complete angle is basically beta from here to here it is beta so 2 pi plus theta 1 minus beta by omega will give you the circuit turn of time I hope this point is clear now let us find the expression for the output current so this is a very very important expression so let us consider a rough circuit diagram in this case we had a voltage source we had a thyristor and we had an RL see RLE network isn't it so let us consider that again so we need to find the I out the output current isn't it or I out is equal to IS when the circuit is conducting so when we are applying KVL through this loop what we will be getting VS can be written as VM sin omega T so you have VM sin omega T is equal to R into I out R into I out plus the voltage across the inductor that is L into DI out by DT plus E isn't it now if you carefully observe this term we have one transient term that is inductor is basically associated with transient and we have this as steady state so S1 and this as steady state terms basically a resistor and a an, uh, battery acts as a steady state term and in an inductor is a transient term it does not allow sudden change in current isn't it according to the network analysis that we have studied in the past so based on this can we write i out is associated with steady state term and transient term and is is basically having is1 plus is2 so there are two terms and we also have transient so let us consider this as equation number one now what is IS1? IS1 is basically the current associated with the resistor that is the voltage by the impedance that is maximum peak voltage by impedance sine of omega t minus phi this is again according to the network theory steady state response and the transient response so we can consider this as equation number 2 where phi is given by tan inverse of omega l by r and z is given as square root of r square plus omega l whole square I'm not writing those expression but I think it is clear is2 is basically equal to minus of e by r so I'm just rewriting the voltage V is equal to IR formula where V is equal to E in this case and it is minus e by r the reason why it is minus sign over here is a very important observation now if you are having only the voltage source E in this case if you are considering only E is there in the circuit then what will be the direction of current it will start from here and it will flow in the opposite direction with respect to the source isn't it as a result we will be considering minus E by R in this case I hope this point is clear now what is the term that is left over that is basically the transient term that is IT is given as A E power minus R by L into T this is for the inductor so let us label this as equation number 4 now when we are substituting 2 3 and 4 in 1 what do we get we will be getting I out is equal to Vm by Z sin of omega t minus phi minus of E by R plus A E power minus of r by l into t isn't it now according to the waveforms at omega t is equal to alpha this is the instant at which the firing angle was applied so i out is equal to zero isn't it because the inductor does not allow sudden change in current isn't it as a result substituting this in equation number 5 let us consider this as equation number 5 we will be getting 0 is equal to Vm by Z into sine of alpha minus phi minus E by R plus A E power so we know that omega t is equal to alpha and t can be written as alpha by omega when we do that we will be getting R into 
alpha by omega l. Now, when we are rewriting this expression and finding the value of a, what we will be getting? We will be getting a is equal to bracket open e by r minus of vm by z into sine of alpha minus phi into e power r alpha by omega l. Basically, we are taking the exponential term to the other side. As a result, minus will be uh, plus in this case. As a result, we are getting this term. Now, what will be the final expression for i out? If we are substituting a back in equation number 5, then what is that we are going to get? I am going to write the final expression as that would be sufficient over here. Vm by z. You have to take common terms and you will be arriving at this expression. It is just straightforward substitution. So, omega t minus phi minus of sine of alpha minus phi into e power minus of r by omega l I will take common you'll be having omega t minus alpha minus e by r into 1 minus e power bracket minus of r by omega l into omega t minus alpha brackets close This is the final expression for I out. I hope you were able to understand on how to arrive at this particular expression. Now what will be the average output current? So the average output current is present between alpha to beta, isn't it? From the fundamental definition, I out is equal to 1 by total time period that is 2 pi into integration of alpha to beta because the average output current is present between alpha to beta that is into i out into d omega t you will be getting so when we are substituting that vm sin omega t minus e by r into d omega t this is the expression for average output now what is the rms value of output current again the rms value of output current it is available between alpha to beta so when we write i out rms square that is according to the fundamental definition we can write i out is equal to square root of 1 by 2 pi into integration of alpha to beta into vm sin omega t minus e so let us slightly erase this minus e whole divided by r whole square into d omega t again we can simplify and solve this expression but i think this would be sufficient to solve the numericals i hope in this video you were able to understand and analyze the working of a single phase half wave control rectifier for an rle load in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you